To show that a set of vectors forms a basis for r cubed, by definition, we must show two things. We must show that the vectors span r cubed, and we must show the vectors are linearly independent. We're going to do two examples of showing that a set of vectors forms a basis for r cubed. We'll begin with this example. We need to show that these three vectors form a basis for r cubed. So we're going to have to show that they span r cubed and that they're linearly independent. Now to prove that they span r cubed, we need to prove that this equation is consistent for all vectors b and r cubed. This just means no matter what vector from r cubed we take, we can write that vector as a linear combination of the vectors in our set. That's how we show that the set of vectors spans r cubed. But we will also need to show that our set of vectors is linearly independent. To show that, we'll show that this equation has only the trivial solution. If the only way we can combine our three vectors to get zero is by multiplying them all by zero, that's the trivial solution, then the vectors must be linearly independent. Now, these two equations give way to these two systems of equations. Let's make sure we understand where these come from, beginning with this one on the left. So this comes from this equation and equating components. If we call the first component of our arbitrary vector b, b1, here's that first component, it must equal the first component of our vector on the left. On the left, of course, we have a linear combination of vectors, but that in total is a single vector. And the first component of that single vector is k1 multiplied by the first component of v1, so we see that 1k1 there, plus k2 times the first component of v2, so we see minus 2k2 there, plus k3 times the first component of v3. You see that's a 3, and so we have a 3k3. So this first component of our vector on the left must equal the first component of the vector on the right. Similarly, we may call the second component of b, b2, and that must equal the second component of our vector on the left. The second component of the vector on the left is k1 times the second component of v1, so we see negative 4k1, plus k2 times the second component of v2, so we see plus 5k2, and so on. On the right, we have the exact same system of equations except all equal to zero. That comes from our linear independence equation. Again, we have the first component of our vector, the second component, and the third component. They must all equal zero, and we're trying to show that this equation has only the trivial solution. These two systems of equations, of course, have the same coefficient matrix, where the columns are representing k1, k2, and k3, and in each column we have the coefficients of that variable. 1, negative 4, 1. 1, negative 4, 1 negative 2, 5, 0, negative 2, 5, 0. So both of these systems have the same coefficient matrix, and in fact, there's a very easy way to show that this system is consistent and that this system has only the trivial solution. And it comes down to this equivalence, which we've previously proven, link in the description. The determinant of a matrix A, a square matrix, being non-zero is equivalent to the system AX equals B being consistent for every vector b, and it's also equivalent to the system ax equals zero having only the trivial solution. So if we find the determinant of this matrix to be non-zero, then yes, this system is consistent for every vector b, and yes, this system has only the trivial solution. So we'll take the determinant of this matrix, we'll see that it's non-zero, and that will establish that our three vectors do form a basis for R3. Since this is a three by three matrix, probably the quickest way to find its determinant is to use the diagonal trick. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson on that. It's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is rewrite the first two columns to the right of the matrix, and then this makes it easy to look at the diagonals that we need. So what we have to do is multiply along these rightward diagonals and add those products together. So doing that, we have one times five times two, which is 10, negative two times six times one, which is negative 12, so plus negative 12, 
and then 3 times negative 4 times 0, so plus 0, but I won't bother writing that. Then we're going to have to do the same thing, but on these leftward diagonals, and we will subtract the sum of those products. So we're going to have a minus, and then in here we'll add up the products along the leftward diagonals. 3 times 5 times 1 is 15. 1 times 6 times 0 is just plus 0. And then negative 2 times negative 4 times 2 is 16. So the determinant is 10 plus negative 12, which is negative 2, minus 15 plus 16, which is 31. So we have negative 2 minus 31. Thus, the determinant is negative 33, which importantly is not 0. Since the determinant of this matrix is non-zero, we also know that this system is consistent for every vector b, and this system has only the trivial solution, because those things are equivalent to the determinant of the matrix being non-zero. And there we go. We have then established that these three vectors form a basis for r cubed. Another method would be to use Gauss-Jordan elimination on this matrix, and what you would find is that it reduces to the identity, which, in the case of this system, would tell you values for k1, k2, and k3 that would satisfy the system for any given value of the b's. And in the context of this system, it would tell you that k1, k2, and k3 are all equal to zero. Let's jump into another example. We're going to show that these three vectors form a basis for r cubed. We can skip all the setup this time, though. We understand that what it comes down to is evaluating the determinant of the coefficient matrix. And if you look back at our coefficient matrix, the columns are the components of our vectors. 1, negative 4, 1, 1, negative 4, 1, and so on. That's because each column is representing the coefficients of k1, k2, and k3. The coefficients of k1, of course, are the components of v1. The coefficients of k2 are the components of v2, and so on. So we understand how to construct the relevant coefficient matrix for this example, and we need to take its determinant. Here are the columns of the coefficient matrix, 4, 2, negative 4, negative 1, 3, 5, and so on. If the determinant of this matrix is non-zero, that will establish that any vector from R cubed could be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors, which means that they span R cubed. And the determinant not being zero will also tell us that the only way to combine these vectors to get zero is if you multiply them all by zero. Hence, they're linearly independent. So let's calculate this determinant, again using the handy-dandy diagonal trick. We'll duplicate the first two columns and put them on the right side of the matrix, and then add up the products along these rightward diagonals. So 4 times 3 times 2 is 24. Negative 1 times 6 times negative 4 is 24. And then the next one is going to be 0, so we'll stop there. And now we have to do the same thing, but along the leftward diagonals, and we will subtract those. So 0 times 3 times negative 4, which is just 0. 4 times 6 times 5, which is going to be 120. And then negative 1 times 2 times 2 is going to be negative 4. So the determinant of this matrix is 24 plus 24, which is 48, minus 120 minus 4, which is 116. And this equals negative 68, which importantly is not equal to 0. Hence, these three vectors do span R3, and they are linearly independent. So by definition, they form a basis for R cubed. So that's how we show that a set of vectors forms a basis for R cubed. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find my linear algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to select videos, as well as access to these lecture notes if you join at the premium tier or above. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus, I'm a V to the T, my parameter the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need